Welcome to the map Harad River in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 in a good against evil matchup between Gondor and Isengard. Uruk Pit Furnace opening and we have a Barracks and Farm opening. That's a mistake in my opinion. You always want to get the Blacksmith first because it needs time to hit level 2. And it means if you build it at the beginning of the game, it will just hit level 2 way faster. So Warchant has been used. And the goal of Isengard is to prevent him to destroy this Lumber Mill. Gondor using the Alvin Wood, because on the Alvin Wood the soldiers are stronger. And there is no need to fight before you reach the point of the Alvin Wood. Because you will just get smashed by the Uruks. And with this opening, Gondor's early game is going to be a bit stronger. But it will also delay the stable in the Knights of Gondor quite a bit. So what you want to do here is you want to place the Hobbit next to the soldiers. So you can share experience with the soldiers. As you can see, he's also in a great spot. And Hobbit hitting level 2 will make it way more difficult for Aizen. Move out. Again, do the same. Yeah, move to Hobbit. Very good, very good. I mean, obviously, he will lose this because Aizen will be able to bring more and more Uruks to this location. But he's getting some power points. Level 2 unlocked. But not many soldiers remaining anymore. So eventually the Uruks will be winning this fight. Unfortunately for Gondor, he wasn't able to get any soldier to level 2. But the Hobbit on the other side is level 4 now. Holy... Almost a power point collected from this fight all alone. And he was even able to, you know, cloak his Hobbit. That's very good. The Hobbit should be now recovering health over time. And one more soldier is going to make it. He was also capturing this one over here. And will recruit eventually more Gondor soldiers. He has now Blacksmith Farm in the base. But it looks like he's saving up for his stable. As he has 850. Cash looting is a big no-no. You always want to spend the money the second it's kicking in. Now he has cash looted already a lot. He has a thousand... But he never choose to go for the stable. Um, yeah, he's going for the stable now. But again, each second matters in those online games. So Hobbit can cloak and block the settlement. That's a good start still, I think, for Gondor. Not bad, not bad at all. And the soldier, when you keep him alive, it's going to be very good for the lead game. So Aizen's eco, not looking too bad though. He has three furnaces inside the base. Going for the Berserker next to clean this soldier. And eventually the Hobbit too. But level 4 Hobbit is going to hit like a truck. And if he ever gets to unlock the level 5, he will unlock the Peregrine of the Tower Guard ability, which will give passively Pippin a 30% damage boost. So the stable up on the field, and the first knight is going to be recruited. But the good thing for Gondor is that Aizen wasn't able to creep anything yet so far. Watch this damage from the Hobbit. You need to micro now. If Hobbit lands the rocks, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be a big ouchie, you know what I'm saying? Take this. You see this chunking boy? He's a full of a Turk. And he's very close to level 5 too. Kill this Uruks there. And you will get level 5. Eventually. Hit him. Look the damage. Boom. Level 5. Peregrine of the Tower Guard. Okay. The first Knight of Gondor is on the field. He's gonna go for the second one. No, he can't. He is actually kind of broke. He can't afford it. But he has actually one farm which will be destroyed very soon. That is the first pikeman up on the field. Remember, there is no soldier. Soldiers are obviously a cheap counter to the pikemen and a very good choice at the beginning of the game until you have better counters like Farami, Boromi eventually. But you need the second Knight of Gondor as soon as possible. That's the key to victory. Basically, you want to get first, second Knight immediately without any waiting time. And then you can fill up the bees. But I think he made a mistake that he fill up the bees right after the first Knight of Gondor, which obviously uh, will kind of limit his possibilities. That comes to Vorchan on the pikeman. He should be able to creep this, no problemo. The Hobbit is still remaining on the field, by the way. Level 6 and a half. Something we don't see very often. The good thing for Aizen is the Slumber Mill is in a perfect safe spot. And he has a very good looking base too. Look at the base. He has almost full base besides those two settlements. The addition Sharku might also be recruited later on. We shall see. Level 2 soldier. Nothing to be joking with, you know. That comes to Elvin Wood. And I think Gondor should be able to, you know, interrupt him from creeping this. I'm curious who's gonna get the last hit. Gondor should be focusing it, but Isengard took it and the money will be split it 50-50. Gondor in the meantime was able to creep this one at the top side. 
And did he ever go for the second night of Gondor? The answer to this question is a no. He never went for the second night. He has actually 1400. I'm assuming he's planning to recruit Boromir. So it might be an infantry threat from this kind of player, Sif. It is a worker scouting and kind of taunting. Come at me, bro. Dare you. Oh my god, it was a mistake. No, no, no. <laughs> Get trampled, boy. The thing is, I mean, obviously, if Isengard is paying attention, there is no world in which the soldiers of Gondor can ever catch up to those pikemen of Isengard. Because look at the movement speed differential, you know? They are very fast. There comes Shark Sharku. Sharku is not the greatest hero uh, yet. We need to obviously adjust him a couple of times. It's his first introduction into the multiplayer. So it's all about, you know, getting feedback from the online players and seeing how he is feeling like. And then we will adapt them, adjust them in the upcoming versions of the patch 2.22. Aizen is creeping this one. Sharku is creeping this one. Sharku's damage is not <clears throat> too shabby. I mean, he's not that tanky though. You need to always keep that in mind. He has not that much health. Only 1260 health. So not a tanky hero. More like a fast hero who can lurk around. Ooh, oh my god, he, he got the creep with the bottom here. Bottom here level 4, but the money will be taken by Isengard. That's good. So infantry meta for Gondor. Um, he has the brothers now, Faramir and Boromir. Let's see who's gonna show his quality more. Gondor, I think Gondor was able to creep this one. Lords. Oh, he will not hit the cripple. And the Knight of Gondor will live yet another day. Michael for the outpost control. He has 2.2k. That's not bad. Sharku, in the meantime, was able to creep level 3. Remember, you don't want to joke with Boromir. Boromir is able to knock you down, and then he will disable you for a sh long duration. And the brother, Faramir, with the warning arrow, can finish you off. The creep here will be taken by the brothers. Remember, Boro already unlocked his power spike with level 4, but the real power spike will be unlocked with level 7, the 4 Gondor ability. And also, his DPS against the structures, not too bad. Lambrimil workers, suiciding. Gondor is good eco though. I mean, he has three farms outside. It's pretty good. But so does Aizen. Aizen is creeping. Lourdes is an anti-hero himself. So if Lourdes gets level 3, which he will for sure, after creeping this one, let's see. Oh my god, he stole it. He stole it. Thank you very much for the creep. And got money too? Money too? Okay, 5,000 for Gondor. So he's going for the, for the heroes. Yet again, he won't get punished, you know. These farms are still remaining on the on the, on the the field. And the thing is, after Gandalf, he has the chance to go for the combos. And his farm is going to get almost level 5 after creeping this one. His Boro already got his leadership. And he will have triple leadership in total. I mean, Lourdes can cripple, obviously. But I don't think he got what it takes to take down the Boromir. Without Carnage, it's quite difficult. But he might be able to interrupt him from creeping this. He's going to focus now Sharku. There comes the cripple. He will, he will take the creep first, level 4. He, he's not crippling yet, but he's bringing the pikemen. There comes the cripple on this dude. Does he heal from the spellbook? The, the answer is no, but he's gonna... Ooh, he couldn't! He couldn't use the one arrow! And Charco will be able to finish him off. This will be fixed, by the way, next version. Um, We are missing some assets, but it's, we are working already on it. So next version, it's gonna be fixed. Charco was even able to steal the money. Lord still level 1 though, and now Boromir is free. And Boromir, you don't want to joke with this guy. So Faramir has been taken down, but he was already able to get level 4. That's a very big improvement for the Captain of Condor. And Aizen's eco is looking phenomenal. Now we have double wizard on the field, boys. We have Saruman the Great the wizard. wizard. And a wizard arrives precisely when he means to from Gondor. Who now has the strength to fight against the forces of Gondor? And Isengard. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, I don't know about that one. He could, he could use the ability to stun him. Sharko. Oh, Boromir is finishing off Sharko. But there comes the Easter Light. Okay. I mean, the good thing for Lourdes is yet he died. But he was able to cripple Gandalf. And this way, save his master Saruman. If that wouldn't happen... Gandalf would be able to run down Saruman. Remember, Gandalf is a way stronger hero against other heroes with the Lightning Sword. When he catches him solo with the Lightning Sword, Saruman will get 100 to 0 okay? 
Sardom is more like good against AO, uh, with, uh, with his AoE damage, area of effect damage, you know, the blast and the fireball, obviously. Fireball is a power point farming machine ability. And his warm tongue game changing. But Ganav is more like a single target dude with his abilities, like Lightning Sword and especially Easter Delight, you know? So Gondor's eco is not looking too bad by all means. He has like multiple level two farms outside, level three, one of them has good eco in the base. He never revived his Faramir, which is a must have. You need Faramir back. The Faramir Gandalf combination with the warning arrow from Faramir and the Easter Light from Gandalf can actually be super strong. Outpost captured by Gondor. Maybe go for the Archer range here. Maybe go for the Marketplace. That's a possibility too, just for the late game. And Sharku will be revived eventually. He's level 5. Now Isengard is finally a third hero in the bank. A hero that can be a good adjustment for the Vork Rider spot in the lead game of the game. Vorks are already, already are pretty strong in the beginning of the game, level, you know, early mid game. But they fall off against other cavalry. Boom! Chakalaka! In the lead game. So this combo, not gonna be too impactful against people like Saruman. You need some firepower. You need some range. That's what you need. He's going for the armory. Yeah, he, go, he went for the Forge Bleeds and Heavy Armor on his Knights of Gondor. Remember, Boromir's leadership works also on Knights of Gondor, but his Captain ability and the Four Gondor ability doesn't. It only works on infantry, which also include archers. So he gives 60% DPS, though. That's pretty good. There comes the whole ability and War Chant. Now you need to build. Charku giving them also. 25% armor, this works. There comes Lightning Sword. He will be able to catch him. Solo catch him. Beautiful catch by the wizard. Level 6 unlocked, ladies and gentlemen. The thing is, Isengard is unleashing, though. I mean, you don't want to give Isengard too much time because he now has all the upgrades from the spellbook, uh, from the armory, I mean. He has a wizard who can always keep leveling up those armies. And in a infantry battle, I think Isengard is just too strong. With the war chant, Especially when and if Lourdes gets level 5, which he might get because he's creeping this area, which is one of the, which is the last creep remaining on the map Harat River. So that's not bad at all. No Faramir though, I don't get it. Get Faramir back, boy. No archer range either. So we have in total 1, 2, 3, 4 farms outside for off players. It looks like they're splitting the map in two pieces. So basically that's the map, right? And they are not using any units to you know kind of hurt the eco the thing is if you have the same amount of settlements like your opponent does with good against evil evil have all, will always have more money than you will have lumber mills producing more resources but now he has double outposts under his control that's not bad oh be careful there the wards are pressuring a little bit though that's good and boromir i mean i Boromir, you want to you want to be careful with him when there is a lord on the field, and the Gandalf is not around. We can see that one. Oh, there he is. Okay, he want to beat him, but when you can't use Horn of Gondor and you know stun him, if there is Saruman nearby, ooh, beautiful. Now there is no world in which uh, lords will cripple Boromir if there is a Gandalf on the field, and he will die even. The army or the great company summoned by the Gunner player was immediately stolen by the Isengard player with the Warm Tongue ability. And Boromir got killed, you know, just like in the films. <laughs> just like in the films. Marketplace now for Gondor. Not bad. The great company will be now given over again to Gondor's hands. And again, nothing, no firepower. The thing is, your infantry combo. Tower Guard, Soldier Combination, they can never be a threat to people like Lourdes or Saruman. Only your knights can be, and his, you know, your knights can be easily countered by the pikemen. So you need something that can actually threaten both heroes, Lourdes and Saruman. That's very important. What you could do is make this Tower Guard Ranger Combination, super strong combo. Pretty much no weaknesses. Oh, there comes the Beast Rush. There is Gandalf on the field. But remember, there is a Lourdes coming. Lourdes' goal is to cripple this dude. Beautiful. With that blast. And now he's zooming around. And oof, what a fireball. Not the best. <laughs> okay. The thing is, you can't 
keep up with the speed of the wizard though like basically lords can't be everywhere where gandalf is going to be right Ooh, but look at this new combination, dude. Sharku with the Vork Riders. Just like in the films. When he, when Saruman was saying to Sharku, send your Vork Riders. And he was the only one who was really threatening. Like he, I mean, basically, obviously, Lourdes was the one who killed Boromir in the films. And Sharku was the one who almost killed Aragorn too. So long story short, the Eisen army was more threatening against heroes, that is. And only Beach King killed also Theodin, right? I mean, Mordor didn't have that many heroes anyway. But what did Mordor have? Gothmog, who did literally nothing. And the Nazgûls really couldn't do too much either. So it was only the Beach King who killed. And Isengard had two heroes. You know, Lourdes, obviously killing Boromir. And Sharku, almost killing Aragorn. Heroes will be revived very soon for Gondor. He's going finally for the Archer range. Selling those archers or a swordman. But he has double barracks. I don't know. Maybe he forgot that he had a barracks there. <laughs> what is this technology? It's a waste of, uh, you know. Ooh. Okay, that was, the, that was a very bad. The thing is, when there is Sharko around, um, you can't one-shot the wards with the blast because he will give them increased armor leadership, right? And here is the deal why this is happening. So basically, if Gondor Knights... But, or Rohirrim by the shields, he get additional tankiness against horses. That's something works are not able to do. But works in exchange now can have the leadership from Sharku to compensate the differential between their armor set versus the Knights of Gondor and Rohirrim. In an all-out fight, I still think, and I'm certain, that Gondor Knights will win with the shields because hole is only per, um, you know temporarily, 30 seconds. Outpost has been taken down, by the way, at the bottom side. We have three pikemen, crossbowmen combos around this location. And Isengard is slowly but surely progressing, getting closer to the castle of Gondor. PowerPoint-wise, we have the Ream already for Fishy, Isengard. He has almost three power points in total. And Sif, the Gondor player, has one power point collected after the Heal, Albion Wood, Gan of the White, and the Great Company. So in PowerPoint department, Isengard has definitely the lead. Which is not the best thing ever for Gondor, you know? Ooh. Ooh, nice dodge. Nice dodge. Here is, he is feeding lots of power points. Now, the later you go for the base rush, the more difficult it is going to be to deal a significant amount of damage. Because now the level 3 furnaces will become super tanky. And they also will shoot. He was also using the heal. Now the Vorgs are coming with Lourdes and Saruman. Lourdes positioning himself in a location where he could cripple, but Gandalf can just run through the castle into a different direction, and that's going to be also his plan. He will be surviving this, no problemo. And to be honest, but the damage he was able to deal, not the greatest. He was getting not power, enough power points and feeding more power points in exchange. But in the meantime, he's getting stronger. The thing is, Gondor is not that rich because he's, he was having the barracks here for no reason. And he has now four spots in the base which are not giving him any resources. And remember, Isengard was killing, destroying these farms over and over again. That's why they are not level two, uh, level three yet. They are only level two, and there is a huge differential between a level two resource building and a level three resource building. And he needs. Ooh, hold on a second. Oh my God, I didn't see that. I think Lourdes killed Gandalf. Somebody help me. That's all I could hear. My bad. <laughs> Okay, now Isengard, that, that's like the perfect timing. When you want to siege, and before you can siege, you kill Gandalf. Like, that's the perfect situation right there. Ooh, fireball. Actually, the Trebuchet are killing more of their own stuff than from the enemy. Varami uh, is also pretty low. One Barista is going to make it to the spot. Um, remember, they have Boromir leadership, but no Faramir leadership. He's trying to revive his Gandalf. No, he can't. He's actually kind of broke. Um, you know, because he has not that much map control, but the ballista is exposed, will be getting one tapped from the Knights of Gondor. That's why you wanna, why you wanna, ooh, be careful there. Okay, he's rotating. Uh, uh, he's brief, but Poromi is not paying attention. Uh, boom, boom. Uh, I mean, Gondor making a big misplay right there. That's not the best call, and he will be able to make this trebuchet fight for him. Uh, ooh, but he will now lose the Saruman exchange. 
If he can destroy the Ballista, he can buy lots of time for himself. The Vorks are trying to make it to the Trebuchet, but they can't. Sharko is using his new ability, my Vork is hungry, which will grant him 50% more DPS, but no tankiness. Tower Guards are still able to melt him. Trebs are gone, and Gondor is defeated. What a big mistake there. I mean, he had this game in his pocket. I think Gandalf getting caught off guard, his delete um, archers, not the best. But maybe this game, if you will ever watch this game, on YouTube might help him to understand his start was not bad his decision making was okay but then the lead game the preparation delete rangers combos super delete uh, trebuchet was costing him the game but anyways I hope you still enjoyed this one if you did you know what to do leave a like subscribe I will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys